So let's start with delegates and events question and answer videos. Before we go ahead and we try to understand delegates, let's try to understand what problems the delegates solve. If you understand the problem domain, then it will be very easy to understand delegates and you know, we will be able to map how delegate uh, you know, solves a problem and what delegate is all about. So in this video, what we'll do is that we'll first understand the problem, then we will see how a simple delegate looks like, and then we'll try to see that how delegate addresses that problem. So let's first try to understand the problem. Now here's a simple CLS Maths class and this CLS Maths class has an add function. And this CLS Maths class is consumed in a UI code. So basically, uh, you know, you have created an object OBJ Math, an object called as OBJ Math of CLS Maths and you are calling the add function and you are getting the results. Now over a period of time, you know, uh, somebody goes and adds a subtract function in the CLS Maths class. Now, if you want to use this subtract function in your UI code, then you have to again basically call the dot sub method because you have named the subtract function as sub. So you need to basically go and create the create the object and call the subtract function. So in other words, you know any changes in your in your business object that is CLS Maths will lead to changes you know your in your user interface code. So in other words, there is a heavy coupling uh, between CLS Maths. Uh, new functionalities added and your user interface code. So how can we solve this problem? If somehow, if somehow my, my client, you know, basically points towards the abstract pointer and this abstract pointer then points towards the functions, you know, then probably I could be able to achieve or I will be able to achieve a decoupling. So in other words, if my client, you know, rather than directly touching or directly calling these methods like obj dot obj maths dot divide or obj maths dot add etc he just references this abstract pointer and this abstract pointer internally then calls the divide add and subtract or multi, you know multiplication functions and this abstract pointer can be created by using delegates so basically delegates are nothing but they are pointers towards functions or methods so a very abstract pointer which you can point towards a function and then you can invoke it in a very generalized manner. So let's first try to understand how to create a delegate. Once we understand how to create a delegate, we'll again go back to a problem and see that how delegate will help us to solve the solve the problem. Now, over here, I have a simple example here and here I have a simple add function. And what we're going to do is that we're going to create a simple delegate which points towards this add function. Now, creation of delegate is a four step process. Declare, create, point, and then invoke the function. So the first thing is you need to declare a delegate. Now over here, we are going to point towards the add function, which has an integer as a return parameter type and two input parameters, you know, which are again integers. So you need to create a delegate by using the delegate keyword and the return type is integer. It should be same as what the function you're going to create and some name to it like point to add function. And then basically, you know, the same data types as the input parameters. So the first step is you declare the delegate with the proper return types and input types as your function or your method has. The second thing is you create the delegate. You create a reference to the delegate. So this point to add function, I have created a reference here called as my PTR. The third step, you point this reference to the method add. So over here, I'm saying my PTR is going to point to this dot add. And finally, you invoke the delegate by using the invoke function. So the my PTR dot invoke, I'm passing two numbers to it. And basically I'm just showing the output. So I declared the delegate by using the delegate keyword. Then I created the reference. After that, I pointed to the method for which the delegate was created. And finally, I invoke the function. Now let's see the same code, uh, you know, through the Visual Studio. Now here's the same sample of the simple delegate, which is in the source code. So basically here's my add function. Then, and here's my delegate, which points towards the add function. And I have a button click. I have created a simple form with a simple button. And in the button click, what I'm doing is I am creating a reference, third step. And then finally, I'm pointing the reference to the add function and finally invoking it. So basically, you can see that we declared the delegate. We basically created a reference. Then we created uh, we pointed the reference to the method and we are then uh, calling the invoke function to invoke the delegate. 
So if you run this, you will see 20 plus 10, that is 30. So this is a very simple example of uh, how delegate works. Now what we'll do is that, you know, now that we have understood the concept of delegates, uh, we will take this delegate concept and we'll try to understand that how is our problem, you know, which, which we talked about, you know, the decoupling problem where we had a CLS maths function and we were adding, you know, more functionalities, you know, how that problem can be addressed by using uh, delegates. So basically here's my application which is running. It's taking a bit time. And then when I call the button function, it just gives me the total out. So this value or this uh, data is coming now from the invocation of the delegate. So let's move ahead and try to understand that how, how this delegate, the delegate will help us to solve the decoupling problem which we discussed previously. So here's a CLS maths class and we have discussed uh, in our previous session the problem related to this class that whenever we add a new functionality that is add, subtract or you know any kind of other functionalities to it, your client code has to change. So what we have done is the first step is we have made all these functionalities, these dynamic functionalities add, subtract as private. So tomorrow if I add something new over here, you know, the, the person who is consuming the CLS maths class do not have to worry about it. The first thing what I've done is I've made all my algorithm functionalities as private. The second thing what we have done is we have exposed a delegate outside. You can see that we have exposed a pointer maths delegate and this pointer math delegate will point towards the operations, you know, depending on what you give him. So if you give him one, he will actually point towards the add method. If you give him two, he will point towards the subtract method. So the public function or the public method what we are exposed to call uh, the add subtract or any kind of new functionality is nothing but it's a simple delegate. Now in our UI code what happens is the UI actually just points towards the delegate. So you can see that I've created a CLS maths class and then I'm getting the pointer. I'm not calling up the add or the subtract function. I'm just calling the get pointer method which we have created here. And this get pointer method, you know, depending on what operations you give him, he will actually invoke the functionalities. Okay. So now if you run this, so let's run this. 